Hello everyone, uh, good uh, good evening or good day depending of where you are watching this live stream. We are today with a special guest, uh, Jonathan Benainus. Hey Jonathan, how is it going? Hello Vincent, how's it going? I'm pretty good, thank you. Um, hi everyone, uh, pretty happy to be here and be able to talk about this signature series today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure actually. Um, so I, I guess uh, I'm expecting that most of the people who are watching the live stream already know Jonathan because you are super active uh, on the community. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, to share a bit uh, your art station. And meanwhile, what you can do is uh, presenting yourself a bit, maybe. Yeah, uh, well, basically, uh, I started in the video game industry about 14 years ago. Um, I spent the most of my career as an environment artist and I uh, worked on a few AAA games such as um, EV Rain and Beyond Two Souls at Quantic Dream, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn at Guerrilla Games, and uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands and Assassin's Creed Odyssey at Ubisoft. And currently, I'm senior texture artist uh, for WB Games Montreal. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So. Um, yeah, basically on my on a daily basis, I'm just like making materials uh, using Substance Designer and Painter. But um, as you probably know, I really uh, enjoy playing around with uh, Substance Designer. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you have you have been starting as an environmental arti artist, right? Yeah, exactly. I spent like almost uh, ten years uh, as environment artist. Uh, so um, that's why the the most of the time when I make when I create materials, I always think about an environment. Um, and uh, in uh, in the case of this signature series, I really like already had in mind a few environment that I wanted to create out of these materials just to be able to present present them in situation. Yeah, definitely, and that, that that was super cool. So as I said, you are super active in the community, and uh, actually, you made, for example, you were at GDC with us last year, and you also have um, a game road page. So I'm going to show it a bit. Just give me a second, if I can do that. Hmm. I'm going to pass this way because yeah, like that. So I'm just showing your uh, game road because we're, today we are going sh to show one uh, one um, breakdown of of your material from the Substance Source release. But you you made a lot actually, uh, also which are available on on, this, on the game road. Yeah, actually, um, um, uh, a lot of artists just uh, asked me to share some of uh, my materials that I created, especially my barrack ceiling or uh, my damage wall. So. Um, I just decided to make them available on Gumroad, so uh, all the graphs are uh, available. You have comments, uh, everything is framed, so you can uh, learn uh, and dissect all this graph and, and study them and take the time to take a look at them. Uh, especially for the barrack ceiling, like the, um, you have 30 subgraphs that are available, so you can go through all the different components of the, the material to, to check how I created that. and um, yeah, um, basically yeah. Pe people mainly know me because of this uh, material. So uh, for the signature series, I had the idea to uh, keep working on this and keep making like architecture material because this is what I love to do basically. Uh, this is what I enjoy the most. So uh, I decided to go with different architecture styles. Uh, to be able to play around with designers. So um, I decided to go with the Art Deco, the Victorian, and the Osmanian. And um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. 
Yeah, basically, um, as I said, um, when I started to talk with the Sipsen source team, uh, people mainly know me because I made that barrack ceiling. So um, for this signature series, uh, we thought about a different theme and um, I, I finally decided to go with something kind of similar, but the cool thing here is that I had 15 materials, so I could go um, in in different ways and and create like different type of architecture. So um, as I mentioned, you know, I created like uh, the Art Deco, the Victorian, and the Osmanian, and um, that was very fun for me to think about how I could uh, use this material in situation and create environment out of them. So. Um, for the for the art for the art deco, I already had in mind like a sort of uh, a corridor from an hotel or something. Uh, for the Osmanian, uh, I went with a sort of you know small street and small neighborhood in Paris. And for the Victorian, I created um, uh, an office slash library uh, with Chesterfield sofa and um, libraries all around. So, yeah. yeah. That's, that's really cool, honestly. And uh, I think you actually just released like uh, half an hour ago the latest, uh, uh, let me check that, uh, the latest uh, version of uh, uh, the, the latest environment, right? Yes, uh, I just released um, the uh, Victorian office uh, just like maybe 15 minutes ago or something. So uh, you can check it out. You have a few videos breakdown just uh, to show you the different steps. So yeah, the renders, the renders are done in Marmoset tool bag, and um, all the material that you can see here uh, are using the the signature collection that I've created. The uh, that I've created, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm try I'm just browsing down on ArtStation because just to show one of the video, but this is insane and this is super. That's a perfect way to show uh, actually the materials in action because uh, we we can feel here that you 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 are you were an environment artist as well. So I'm just going to showcase this one for example where you see the all the steps with the first the maze lighting uh, the environment and then the the different variation with the texturing that you do that's that's crazy yeah yeah exactly it's just like you know creating a block out uh, started to uh light the scene um adding the height and uh adjust the albedo etc so yeah that was pretty fun to do yeah, and th that's really cool. So what we are going to do just before to start uh, uh, the breakdown of a material, maybe uh, we're going to see that after. I'm just making a small parenthesis about the Mitmat 2 contest. Uh, so it's going to end in few hours. So uh, I expect that some of you guys are uh, uh, entering the contest. So this is the perfect time to launch a render because as, uh, as we said, we are going to uh, we are going to make uh, like maybe one hour, one hour and a half, two hours. We don't know yet, uh, depending of uh, what we have to show and your questions. And we are going to focus on one specific material. So I'm going to show first Substance Source. Uh, let's show it this way. So in Substance Source, you see that you have the signature collection here. You actually created 15 materials in total, if I'm not wrong. Here they are. So they are all awesome. And Today, we are going to focus on this one, uh, which is actually free. Uh, it's uh, the Haussmannian building facade. I'm going to show it on uh, your art station because I, I think you have better renders if I'm not wrong. So the Haussmannian is... Uh, let me find it. Uh, uh, just, just to let you know, Vincent, apparently you don't have any sound. So I don't know if oh, it works. Uh, it was, uh, I think now we, I, I do have sound. It was like uh, okay. for, two, uh, for two seconds. Uh, no worries. Yeah. Just uh, in the chat, just tell, tell us if it came if it came back, but it was my fault. No uh, worries. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm going to look at your material if I can find it. Just stop me because I think. Cool. I pass it. Do you see your material? Yeah. Uh, uh, so. This one, I think, a building facade, exactly. So this yeah. is this one. So do you, can you tell what can you tell us about this material in particular? 
Well, actually, um, I wanted to um, do the live stream about that material because uh, it, it really shows how I could like create variation uh, even on an architecture material. So it's like art surface, but uh, by branching out some elements in your graph, you can uh, create variation even in an art surface material. So I just wanted to show how I could create um, uh, a flexible material and create a wall facade out of just one single uh, SBS file. So the SBSR proposed many variations and presets, and uh, I'm gonna show you I, how I um, tackle this uh, this material. Okay, awesome. I'm just browsing down up to the end because we see your material in context, which is really great, and I think you have like some uh, standard rendering at the totally at the end of the page, so group uh, yeah. like here, exactly. So they're, they're pretty awesome. The amount of details is crazy. And as you are going to see, the flexibility of the material is also crazy as well. So what I'm going to do now is uh, actually share your, uh, maybe you can share your, your screen. Yep. And we are going to pass on your face, on, not on your face right now. So. Um. There you go. Boop. Yeah, so we see your screen. Perfect. All right. So now, here you go. So we are on your Substance Desire graph. So I let you talk. Yep. Um, so um, basically, I'm just going to go back to the start. So um, as you can see, it's a pretty uh, pretty big graph, uh, so I'm going to try to cover everything during the live stream. Uh, but um, just want to start by showing you how it looks like in uh, Substance Player. Because here the plan with the Substance team was to um, uh, create presets uh, in source to uh, allow users to play around with the materials and uh, already propose a few version like presets uh, to just let them play around and eventually, like uh, you know, update the file and create like new variation and stuff like this. So here, this material, it's like the um, it's a ground floor texture, but I also wanted to use the same material to create like the wall facade. So the first floor, second floor, etc. I also wanted to be able to have shutters uh, or not, like change the the overall shape of the window. Uh, add or remove ornaments, stuff like this. So, uh, for instance, if I uh, just show you here, um, if I switch uh, like this parameter, you see that I changed like the the wall stone that you have in the back. So you have lines now. Oh, cool. uh, you can also like remove the low wall, and in this case, you have like a uh, just a. Uh, a floor material, and it's it goes, it, it works the same way for all the different parameters that you have here. Um, you can like change the if you want to have some extrusion in the cornice, uh, if you want to change the window shape, if you want to make it more rounded, uh, if you want to have shutters or not. Um, then you also have like rust level. Uh, you can have curtains or not. Uh, you can change the color of the curtains. You can add more dirt, stuff like this. So uh, if I go back to my uh, presets, you can see that I can switch from uh, a first floor to a ground floor with shutters, etc. That, so, that's pretty cool. And, and the preset, it, it shows the, the power of the presets as well, which really saves time. It, it, you can really keep all the good settings for a specific case. So that's really nice. Yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> it was like very useful to uh, and very handy to uh, play around with this this parameters just to, you know, expose a few a few things, a few switches. Uh, so let's take a look at the, the graph itself. So I just use a simple square shape. So um, it's uh, it's the base. And uh, I created like first the uh, the overall shape of uh, my window. 
So it's just, just transform 2D. And here directly, I uh, created a variation for the, the shape of the window itself. So uh, just use a directional warp and uh, a gradient that is uh, optimized. Uh, but it's basically just a gradient linear too. So it just uh, changed the value for the height just to uh, optimize the file as much as I could because um, the plan here was to allow people to make the file run on any type of uh, computer. So um, yeah, it, 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 it's, it works pretty well uh, globally. Actually, I already have a question. If you can just zoom out to show a bit the, the length of the graph, because uh, one, one, someone is asking, uh, how long did it take to, to, to make all, this whole graph? So yeah, if you don't be scared, guys, it's uh, everything is, <laughs> is all right. Uh, but yes, more or less, uh, how long does it take to make a graph like this one, for example? Um, I would say full time uh, would take like something like two to three days. It, it depends of uh, um, if yeah, if I had to redo it, it would be like um, three days. I'll say three. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And also about the, you know, the parameter that you show, um, how, uh, how do you decide and when do you decide to add this parameter? Do you know at first what you will, uh, you, you will expose or does it come at the end or is it a mix of, of both actually? Yeah, it's a mix of both. Actually, I um, when I started to make the material, I already was thinking about the the facade itself and what I will need to uh, create like all the different variation. But um, some of them just came with the flow as well. Uh, so for instance, like the shape of the window, when I started to create it, uh, I was like, oh, maybe I can like just switch it and be able to have uh, 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 like an, an arc or uh, like a, a straight line. So this is something that I, um, you know, this is, I, I get some ideas when I was making the, the material itself. So uh, it goes with the flow basically, but I had already in mind like the shutters and a few ornaments that I wanted to add and remove. Same goes with the, the low wall, uh, just be able to remove it if I wanted to create like floors. So yeah. Okay, we, we have two more questions and then I, I will let you advance and we will ask the questions uh, after wise. We'll, we'll make some pause anyway, anyhow, during the, the, the process so to, to answer your question. So we have CG Anderson who is asking, uh, so this shadow node network um, also is doing displacement mapping. Actually, uh, yes, because you can use the height map and um, you have a, in the 3D view, the material settings, you can, uh, if you ch choose the proper uh, shader, you can activate displacement. Actually, it's the uh, PBR metallic roughness displacement. And yeah, I use what? Go ahead. You, uh, sorry, uh, uh, here you you have parallax, but on a uh, player, I just use the displacement. So I'm just like showing you the two version. So exactly. yeah, that's it. Then we have Jacek, uh, I won't try to pronounce the name, it's uh, Svezvik, I, I think. Um, level of details depend uh, of our model subdivision. Uh, you, you mean for the tessellation? Yeah, I think it's both tessellation and texture resolution. Uh, yeah, definitely. But uh, you you need to be sure that you have enough um, tessellation to to displace the amount of detail, especially if you go with like uh, 4K or 2K resolution. It's it's better to to have more uh, to have more tessellation to just display everything properly. Okay. And uh, finally, C.G. Anderson, who is asking about the performance cost of this uh, of this material in particular especially with displacement, but more the, the, the substance graph, actually? Well, actually, the, the, the graph runs pretty well. So uh, everything has been, like uh, as I said, super optimized. Um, we downscale every pearl and noise uh, when it was necessary. Uh, all the graph were like just, you know, uh, optimized as much as, as we could. So uh, it, it runs pretty well. Um, so you shouldn't be worried about that. So uh, yeah. 
Cool. Anyway, we for each uh, substance source, the graph and uh, material that we provide, we make uh, a big effort to make them run because they, we know that they can be used in different situations and we, yep. we 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 try to optimize to death. And I, I think that's one of the feedback we receive from uh, uh, artists like you uh, who are invited uh, to to do a, a release, a source release. That generally what it changes um, uh, workflow wise is that we spends way more time optimizing the materials yeah so, definitely yeah so we're going to stop here for the question we we will continue later so don't hesitate to ask uh, in uh, in the the chat room and uh, and we will uh, answer the other ones uh, later on yep so um after creating um that mask um so I'm probably going to go back there. Um, so here I'm creating a switch. So um, uh, when I expose this uh, switch there, uh, I can switch between this shape and that one. And I'll show you later uh, why it's super powerful in designer, because uh, by just using some switch like that and uh, creating like sort of branches in your graph, you can uh, just display part of your graph or others. So it, it's very handy. Um, so let's keep going. So I created that shape. It's just a black and white mask. And I'm mixing it with a, a gray scale, a mid gray value. So 128. Um, and let's keep going. So here, I'm uh, just uh, adding a few lines. Because when you look at uh, the references I gathered from uh, Osmanian buildings, um, just let me show you this. There you go. Up. So if you look at this uh, this facade, you can see that sometimes you have like uh, stones, but sometimes you also have uh, sort of like lines like this. So I wanted to be able to switch between the both, so be able to have stones uh, and lines. So here uh, I created like these lines uh, by just making tile the very the the very simple square that I had at the very beginning, and you will see that I'm reusing that shape a lot uh, all along the process. So um, I use a bevel, then a curve node to adjust like the the gradient and a uh, slow blur just to chisel a bit the lines. And here I'm blending it with um, my base. For the next step here, <clears throat> I'm blending it with the, um, with the wall stone. So here, just to avoid confusion, um, I created a wall stone separately so there you go and to create this wall stone uh, i've created like a stone generator and the cool thing was this generator and it's available there in the in the subgraph uh, if i duplicate it uh, you can change the random seed and get like a different stone all the time uh, i've also exposed a few parameters so you have a gradient bottom so i'm able to tilt my stone um, if I use the, the left one, for instance, you can see that the the, the stone is tilted. Uh, mm -hmm. I can also like change the amount of uh, impacts uh, or if I want to have like more small dots and cracks, etc. So, so cool. uh, I plug that into two, two tile generator that I'm mixing together. And uh, once again, I use a bit of slow blur and mm -hmm. I plug mm -hmm. that in. Sorry. Oh, sorry, because we had a question actually exactly about this, about uh, the tiles. How do you decide the, actually the, the size of the brick uh, within Substance Designer? Uh, do, do you take reference or how do you measure actually? Yeah, I took references and um, for this material that was about, okay, uh, a floor uh, is probably between four and five meter in Paris. Uh, so I just like took the references, checked the scale of the window, and decided the amount of stone to make it looks good. And uh, it, it's it's like it's all about adjustment and uh, you know ratio, pixel density, etc. So I really checked that 
the 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 stones were looking good uh were big enough but not too big and were matching with the the references that i had okay cool and and for you 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 use the brick generator that you made to to to, to make the bricks of course and yeah. uh, in that case how do you decide uh okay for this kind of uh, elements i'm going to do generator what's your uh decision maker for that well um as long as it's um something that i want to randomize like uh leaves uh or uh bricks or stones uh stuff that i want to splat or stuff like this i usually create a, a a subgraph to make it separately it goes the same with the the flat stone because here as you can see i have like a, a sort of like noise uh, on the surface and it's all over the place so I need it to, and I prefer it to create that uh, uh, surface uh, separately to be able to import it uh, later on in my graph, I will show you where, uh, to create that subtle variation uh, on the surface. So as, as soon as I can separate elements, it helped me really to uh, stay organized and stay efficient and, you know, stay on track. Awesome, thanks. So um, I come back here. So you have, a, once again, a switch. So here I wanted to be able to switch between the stone and the lines. So as you can see, you have the choice between the two. I'm plugging in that into my switch. And I keep working on the height. So the next step was to create that um, window frame. So um, once again, I reuse that mask, just mix the two to create like a frame. And I create a slope with a bevel and I isolate it with a, uh, the previous mask basically. And here I use a curve node. So as you can see, I use my grayscale values there and I just modify the values with the, the curve to uh, create the design that I want. And here, if you look at it, you really have the profile of the, um, the corners that I've created there, the, the frame. So you really have the same, um, the same shape that you have here represented there in the curve node. So it's super powerful, super handy. And, um, after that, I just adjust a bit the values with the level and I uh, use a slow blur with a, a cloud two. It's my go-to the most of the time when I use a slow blur, uh, the cloud two is the one who uh, is really giving me like super great results. And I blend that in max lighting. So basically here, uh, I'm just adding elements after each other. So I'm just like layering elements. So I started with the wall, uh, then I'm, uh, working on the frame now. So the next step is to uh, keep working around the, the framing. So I create that pediment wall. So um, once again, I'm blending it in Max Lighten. Uh, to create it, it's super simple. Once again, I use my square that I make tile. Um, I'm tiling it like many times with a transform. I bevel it. I use the curve node to adjust the slope and I plug that into a Cartesian to Polar to get that cool shape, cool pattern. Slow blur it again and um, just like creating a, a square and I'm subtracting the created shape uh, from the square and I'll blend that in max light in there. That's really cool. Uh, I'm, uh, we're going to make a small pause because we have a lot of questions. Yep. Uh, the first one is actually uh, about the depth. Uh, how do you uh, set up to get to, get, uh, to set up the depth uh, di di between all the, the elements of your graph? Actually, so you have this element up on top of the other, etc. So do you have some t tricks for for this? Well, um, I use a lot of levels. Each element has its own level, and I'm adjusting elements um, uh, one after each other. Uh, so um, you really need to be careful to 
um, you know, avoid um, clipping between the different components because this is something that you can notice super easily in a material when you when you splat stuff around and you can see them crash into each other. Uh, this is the kind of details that makes you feel that it's it's like uh, it's 3D basically. So if you want to keep it realistic, you really need to focus on all these kind of details, like all the contact. Uh, you need to be sure that yeah, this low wall is like behind uh, this this elements. Uh, same goes with the framing. You know, the framing is like behind the wall, but the stone is like behind this framing, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you really need to be careful and check all the components that you have here. And sometimes it takes time, but when you're used to it, you you already like know how to deal with that. And you know, levels like being able to be comfortable with level is super important in designer, especially when you. Uh, base your material on the height map. Uh, it, it's super important to really understand what's going on here and what you do. Cool, perfect. We had a question uh, which I, I can answer. I think about the uh, of uh, M. Stovnoy, ninety, who uh, had concern about the evaluation of a graph uh, uh, as a SBS AR. The best is to actually try because this one is free. So as we said in yep. Substance Source, generally they are super optimized. Then after you can decide how to use it. You can use it as a, a, a directly um, evaluated in, in your game engine. This is something you can do. You can also decide to generate the texture once you have the, the setup that, that works for you. So it's really up to you and, uh, to, what, and to use it uh, the way that it makes sense for you, of course. Um, and another question, which may we may not be um, actually, it was about the the scale, how to decide the scale. But it was more outside of Substance Designer. How do you you set up or 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 this? Uh, I think within a, an environment, it was a uh, uh, story enough uh, once again. Uh, so you may be able to uh, give some hints, but I don't think we'll have time to show outside of Designer for today. But if you have some hint about environment to set it up. Yeah, uh, well, I can uh, just quickly show you maybe um, a breakdown video. It's uh, it's already like on art station. I got it there. So just give me a second. So there you go. So if I just like play this, so you can see that. I'm just gonna just run it once and come back to it after. There you go. So if I go back there, uh, here basically uh, I just like used planes. So these are just like square. And on this square there, you will have the material that I'm currently creating, uh, that I'm currently like showing you. And it's just like, you know, you have squares everywhere. And the material is like mapped on it. So it's just like squares that are like snapped together. And here you can see that you have one texture there, so the one with the shutter. And here you have the ground floor. So I just use one single material. Of course, like the, the balcony is like a, 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 just a cube extruded. And for the, the railing, it's like a sort of filler material that I created for the scene uh, based on the ornaments that I've created for the, for the series. But uh, basically, it's like just the material that we're uh, that we're going through at the moment uh, that I'm that I use to create the wall facade, except for the door, of course, that is uh, a single material in itself. But otherwise, it's just like the same one, like tiling over and over again. The difference is here you have a low wall, here you have shutters, uh, here you have like ornaments and stuff. So, um, yeah. If we go back there, this is what you can see. So I just like can remove that low wall to create a first floor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that, that's awesome. And what is great in the, the the video, the breakdown you just show is that it's important as well to 
to finally keep the geometry quite kind of simple, as simple as possible. So you have the flexibility to change the details in the texture. And so it's way more efficient than uh, trying to add this element in the, in the mesh. It's, it's way easier to change uh, within a, a substance graph, for example. Yeah, and uh, just a little disclaimer uh, for uh, these videos. Uh, this is not, not how we make like a game art environment, right? This is just like uh, for rendering purpose and just, you know, make beauty shots and cool images. This is not how we make an environment in video games, but when you know the rules, you can just bend them and play around with them uh, as long as you uh, know your fundamentals and know how to make proper like real asset for video games. But when you can, when you want to have fun and just play around with displacement and uh, lighting in Marmoset, uh, you can really have a very cool result like that. So it's uh, it's very funny to to play with these rules. <laughs> cool. Yep. So um, let's get back to it. So um, here. I think we were there. I'm adding like cornices. So uh, to create these cornices, just going to show you. Here I use a gradient. So once again, it's optimized in the width, um, but it's just like a uh, gradient linear or one. Um, plugging that into a curve node, and I use a transform there to create my cornice. And once again, you can see the profile of the cornice here. Uh, this is exactly what you have here on your screen. And just using a mirror grayscale to double that uh, cornice, and I'm placing it in Max Lighten using a blend. Um, oh, there you go. So here I'm creating uh, columns around. Here, once again, I'm using that square from the beginning. Use a transform 2D, bevel it slightly. Just gonna show you more of this. So I slow blur it, use a level. Here I'm blending it, so it's subtle there, but um, I'm changing the height in the center. And here I create like a sort of like inset to uh, have my column. I mirror it and I blend it in my Lighten. So next element is for the wall panels. So these are like um, if I just uh, change the tiling there, you can see that you have like sort of like panels. Uh, that are creating like sort of connection between the the different apartments. Um, so here again, it's super simple. There, just a simple square bevel curve node. It's pretty much always the same technique that I'm reusing. So once again, the profile is designed with the curve node. Use a bit. Uh, use a mirror uh, grayscale. I slow blur it. I adjust that with the level, and I blend it back with the rest of my uh, height. That's here, really cool. here I'm changing, um, just adding a detail. Uh, so basically, I have a wall panel, a small and big, because when you have a low wall, you want to have a small one. And when you don't have any uh, low wall, you want to have a, a bigger one. So uh, this is a detail that you don't notice, but when you switch from ground floor to first floor, the 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 chunk on the wall is changing as well because it, it was going to crash into the low wall otherwise if I kept it too big. So and here uh, I have a switch for this, and this low wall switch means when I activate my low wall. It gonna, it's going to switch on that version of the wall panel. And if I deactivate my low wall, it's going to switch back to that one. So switches are connected together depending on what I want it to do. So it's, it's very handy and super powerful. So here I'm adding that detail that you can see here. It's just a wall top frame. 
Uh, again, same technique, bevel, curve node, mirror grayscale, a bit of slow blur and a level, blending that back, max light in. Here I'm adjusting the depth of the, the window slightly and I start to work on the on the widow frame. So it's basically the inside there, the interior. So again, here it's the same technique. I isolate the slope and I redesign it with the curve node. Yeah, you, you are using a lot uh, the curve node with the gradient to, to create all these kind of uh, fresque, barrack fresque. That, that's, uh, that's really cool. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's one of the technique that I developed when I was uh, working on my barrack ceiling, and every time I need to create a cornice or something like this, uh, it's super handy to just have a bevel and use a curve node to design it. So it's it's super powerful. Yeah. So our friends at uh, Experience Points, uh, they, they they are just curious. How long did it take uh, for the whole uh, the whole uh, substance source release uh, to to achieve it? Uh, um, I it's hard to say because I I just worked on it during my spare time. So basically after work because uh, <laughs> I'm working full time basically, um, and um, I think I started like. Uh, in June, and I finished around uh, mid-December, something like this. So I would say like five months, but it's hard to say because you know I worked on it sometime a bit during the lunch break, sometime uh, in the evening at home, uh, and a bit the weekend. So yeah, it's hard to say, but yeah, from I would say like five months, but only on my spare time. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so for the windows, um, I just used again the same technique. So I'm just combining different squares. I'm creating like a frame. And here for the the small tiny details that you can see there, because this is the kind of thing that you that you can notice if you if you go back there. I'm just gonna uh, remove the rust. So this is the kind of details that you can notice, like on Windows, like every chunk is separated. So uh, to do so, I just um, create a bevel, use the bevel to create this, the slopes, and I create a like sort of cage around my my slope. So I get my edges with the edge detect. Uh, I use that. <clears throat> dilatation or erosion uh, node that is super handy. And I'm blurring it slightly and I'm bringing back there. Uh, so I'm subtracting the shape. So I have what you can see here. So this is the kind of small details that are very important. And here I'm just adjusting the, the glass. Actually, just like to have subtle variation uh, in the depths there. So the window is in place now. Um, the next step is to uh, add the ornaments. So those ones are at the junction. So for the ornaments, um, I created for the, the series um, 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 ornament library uh, that I reused from um, from a, from an architecture style to another, uh, and it really helped me to you know uh, be efficient and and be faster uh, because uh, some of uh, you know these different architect uh, architecture styles uh, shared a lot of uh, common elements, but they have also specific ones. So um, this is the all the the different elements that I've created for this collection, and uh, so I used um, so just to mention it, all these elements have been created uh, in Designer, but uh, for optimization purpose, uh, they're available in uh, the collection uh, in bitmaps because it was less 
easier. So um, um, here, if I go back to the result that I wanted to show you, so let's take a look at how I created this. So basically, it's pretty much like kit bashing in 3D. So I just, after creating all my components, I just like played around with them. And here I just, you know, level, transform, and place them. And here I'm just like combining them together. So it's very fun to play with all this uh, different height map once you've created them. So here I'm like making this this funny ornaments that I'm finally placing there. And there you go. And here the same, I use a, a switch for the wall ornaments so I can have it or not. So that's why you can display it or not there. So here and the one in the center. So I'm just going to show you how it works for that one. Oh yeah, you have also the frame ornaments. So uh, these are details that you can uh, add or remove. And here again, I'm using some of the elements that I showed you there from the from the height library that I created. So I make a tile with a tile generator transform it and I just like isolate a part of it and I'm placing it and I blend that back there. Yeah, that, that was actually one of the questions at the very beginning about uh, why the ornaments are not uh, within the graph. That's exactly what you said. It's because of optimization because yeah. it would have been a lot of process of uh, processing uh, for the small details. Yeah, it's 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 gonna, going to be super heavy if I kept it like in the wall graph. But if you want to learn how to create all these different ornaments, um, as we talked about it at the very beginning, uh, my barrack ceiling available in Gumroad uh, proposed like thirty subgraph where you you can learn how to create like this kind of components uh, or that one. Uh, everything is like uh, available, so you can go. Uh, through the wall steps of creation of these assets. Awesome. So uh, here it's the same process for the center part. So I'm just like, you know, using my components, I transform them, I place them, I mirror them, I use some levels, and I'm just blending them together. So it's just like a, I'm layering them one after each other. I'm playing around with the composition, trying to find something cool. Here I had a few uh, references to help me out, but I really played around and tried to find something cool, like a cool shape, cool design. And here again, I'm just adding the, the whole composition to my uh, height map. And once again, the switch at the end, so you can go from that version to that version. All right. So uh, next step is uh, for the, so here I'm creating like the low wall. So very simple, just like a square here. I'm subtracting like the another square for the, the shape of the grid that I wanted to add at the bottom because this is a detail that is very like super typical in Paris. You have like sort of grid every time under uh, each window. So this is something super typical. And I created that grid that I'm placing just it's, in there. It's for the cheese cave. That's where we <laughs> we store the exactly. cheese. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Um, same technique, bevel curve. I'm isolating my shape. Created like a few, a few dots. I'm beveling them, placing them with a transform, and I'm masking out the the shape. So here I got my low wall, and uh, I'm blending it with my height. So in Max Lighting, 
And here you can see that you can have it or not. So once again, I get another switch. So here I'm just adjusting the wall height map because when you're layering elements sometime, uh, you, let's say you start with a mid gray value, you just layer elements on top of each other, and at some point, your height map is like going really close from white. So you might have elements that, that are going to start to clip with the max value. So here I'm just adjusting the wall uh, grayscale value to bring it back to something more, uh, to something closer from a mid gray value, just to be able to have more uh, room in the white area, but also keep having control in the darker uh, areas. Um, so here uh, I made the shutter. So let's take a look at how I created that. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> you, oh. you are not uh, allowed to die yet. You, you, you have to wait a bit. <laughs> I have to finish this first. Yeah, finish this first. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Once again, same technique. Hope you're not bored about it, but it's just like square bevel curve node, just masking out the shape. And I'm creating like, you know, the first part of my uh, shutter. Here for the, the little details they have on top of it, I just created that detail. Super simple. Uh, use the capsule that I split into with a blend. So I'm using like this parameter there just to mask out my shape. I transform it, make it tile. And I adjust the level and I'm blending this back with my shape. And here I'm just like translating the same panel next to each other. So I'm creating my shutter. I'm stacking them next to each other. There you go. And the last level of detail is for the the joints they have. So to connect all the panels. Um, yeah. What you have, I mirror this. I adjust the level and I blend that back with the shapes. On top of this, I wanted to have uh, some sort of, uh, I don't know if it's super visible because it's it's subtle, but I wanted to have like subtle variation in, in the depth. So when you look at it from the profile, you have a, some sort of like <clears throat> undulation. Uh, it has to stay subtle. Uh, even here, if the the height is pretty intense, probably gonna. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, it was a bit intense, so put it back to a normal, normal value. So here you have like subtle variation on the surface, and let's get back to it. Um. So yeah, just to use, uh, just use like a Perlin noise uh, and multiply. And I slow blur the overall shape like with a super small value just to have like, you know, some little damages like subtles. And I blend that back with my height. And here you can see that once again, I got a shutter switch. So it allows me to display or not the shutters on top of my window. There again, height adjustment, just like, you know, bringing back some um, uh, gray, gray, mid gray values to my to my height to be able to add more stuff on top. So here I'm making the column pilaster. So I use a gradient linear one that I'm plugging into a curve node again, and with a transform. You know, if you change the tiling mode from uh, 
the the default setting to no tiling, you can like create this sort of uh, small elements like that. So it's super powerful. Um, here I'm just like mixing out the two shapes to get a sort of bevel around my shape. So um, here it's not visible, but if, if I go back to Substance Player and if I display my column pin plaster, you can see that you have some bevel around, so it works better than having like a just a straight line. And I'm just adding details. So here it's once again squares bevel that I'm subtracting from my shape, and I'm combining that all together. Doing a mirror grayscale, I blend that back and max light in, and I got my column pilaster switch. So yes, I have one, and there I don't have any pilaster. Same goes for the balcony. So I'm not going to go through that one because it's very similar. But I just creating that shape and adding it with a switch as well. Um, so finally, uh, I wanted to add like some cornices would go um, from from a, a side to another, and really like cross the wall the wall texture to allow me to create connection between my floors. So <clears throat> I created that shape. So the same way than the others, just adding it in Max Light in. Same goes with that one. And here I'm just like adding subtle details that you have here. I'm just going to show you this with a normal node. Oh, no, not that, not the good one. There you go. So this is this kind of details that I've created. Um, there you go. So here. And it's just visible there inside. There. All right. So here I'm creating just a, a variation for the balcony because I wanted to uh, create rhythm on my facade. So. I could change between um, this and that. So it's pretty cool because <clears throat> when you make the material tile, you can uh, you can really like break the overall silhouette of the facade by uh, having this kind of uh, detail. So uh, let me show you Cornish, Cornish Extrude. So it's there. So it works pretty well when it's styling. Um, so just wanted to add this this little little feature, um, and now that I'm here, um, it's time for me because the overall height is there, but now I want to add this subtle uh, micro noise that you have on the surface, and here I created that flat stone material. It is just like a few a few noise. The the graph is available there in the in the in the file, so you can go in the subgraph and uh, take a look at it. But it's basically just a few grunge map combined together, some noise and uh, cracks. And I'm making I I'm using this uh, the surface um, to create the noise on top of my sculpt. So here what you can see is just a directional warp that I'm doing on this uh, surface material. And to basically shift all the, the noise that I have around, I created like a luminance mask here based on the height map that you, that you have seen. So I've separated each elements into uh, f uh, gray, gray, grayscale value, but just flat gray values, and I'm using that to shift my noise 
from an element to another. So you don't have like the same grain applied all around and it That's really nice. adds some realism to the the overall look that's awesome that, uh, that's cool a cool technique like to break uh, the noise between elements um, i yeah. have a question from city anderson um which uh, who were curious about the hardware that you are you are cur currently using because it's quite fast to render on uh, so uh right now um Actually, I have a. It's a. It's a pretty small config. So um, there we go. Uh, let me check exactly. Yeah. So it's a um, uh, Intel Core i7, uh, and I got um, uh, 32 gig of RAM uh, and. Um, it's an uh, um, ATI uh, Radian that I have in 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 there. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it works well. Um, I'll probably uh, upgrade my computer soon because <laughs> it's it's very demanding sometimes when you're making, especially when you're working with Substance Painter. Uh, to display everything, uh, also for Marmoset. So I'm probably going to switch back to config with a, uh, a big NVIDIA card or something like that. So I'm just like thinking about it at the moment. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Um, all right. So um, here, so this is the final height. And now I'm going to start working on uh, the albedo. So um, here it's the the albedo for the for the shutters. So I'm just using uh, a fractal sum. Then I'm plugging into a gradient map. Actually, two gradient map with different values. So uh, for these values, usually I try to um, use uh, scan uh, data uh, to pick uh, albedo values and get something um, like uh, consistent and, and stay PBR. So uh, I try to avoid to pick values on the, on a photo or uh, you know random picture that you can find on the internet. And here I'm blending that with a uniform color. And just getting to that result for the shutters. And the thing is, the most of the time when I create my albedo, uh, I uh, work a lot with the ambient occlusion. So I'm generating ambient occlusion out of my height map. And I'm just like clamping the values using histogram scan and you know try to enhance my volumes uh, with this uh, ambient occlusion. So uh, here you can see that I'm highlighting uh, my edges and darkening my valleys. So this is basically what I try to, to get. Here you don't have any shutters because it's not displayed, but when you display them, uh, it's, it looks like this basically. And if you look at the 2D texture there, it's it's pretty it's pretty detailed. Yeah, it really, it really adds a lot. It, that's always a uh, sometimes uh, the the theory says that with PBR rendering you shouldn't add any any element like this uh, because it's it's supposed to be the rendering engine that adds this. But anyway, it really adds a lot to to material material doing this. Yeah, exactly. You have to keep it subtle, of course. Don't break the the PBR, but I think it works pretty well the most of the time to to have this kind of uh, little variations. Uh, here, I'm just adding some rust <clears throat> um, that I'm creating by using a gradient map, and I'm blending it there, so you can have some rust around the window, but 
you can adjust the values. Uh, here I've exposed like some parameters in the uh, MG Edge Dirt. So it's a generator available in Designer. Um, skip it up here. So here I'm just like creating the glass. Super simple, just a few noise again that I'm blending together. And I bring that back there. And uh, for the curtains, um, that was funny to, to do, but it's, again, very simple. A gradient that I'm placing with a transform. That was really like the kind of tertiary detail that you want to add at the very end. So you can keep that simple. You already have like so many things to show that it, it it's not really useful to like uh, create something crazy for the curtains. It's really like the third third layer of detail that you have there. So so here I use a directional warp, uh, and here again just to be able to get something slightly different on the left and on the right. Here I just use a weave to get some uh, subtle grain on my uh, on my curtains. I put them back inside my windows. I'm adjusting them, masking them out. And there you go. So I'm creating this with an HSL. So I'm creating a gradient out of it. I pick a few values. I adjust it. I put that back with a uniform color because this uniform color is exposed in the SBSR. So here you have the total control on this. So if you want to have like uh, green curtains and if you remove the shutters, you will see that you have green curtains. So it's super handy. Ooh, if you cool. want to break the tiling on your facade or something, you can, you know, have the variation that you want. It's it's very funny. There you go. Here it's just a, a small detail that I wanted to add because here we're faking a sort of depth in the in the in the window. So I just inverted that mask to create a uh, some ambient occlusion. And I display that on top of my curtains to create a sort of like shadow around there here. So you have a subtle gradient. So it gives the, the feeling that the, the curtains is like really behind the window. Can you add a, a spying uh, grandmother face that, which, is, <laughs> which is what who is watching uh, this film? Yeah. Actually, at some point, I was I was thinking about making an interior, but you know, I was like, okay, the graph is already pretty big. <laughs> uh, maybe I can jump on the a new texture, but <laughs> yeah, next time, already, next time. Yeah, next time. So um, <clears throat> here again, display or not the curtains, and here it's for the shutters. So uh, if you if you look at the, the switch here, you have to keep in mind that here I'm going to display my shutters in my height. So this albedo is going to be applied on what's going to arrive from left. So uh, it's going to tint my shutters, and there you're going to keep the window. Don't know if it's clear, but let me know in the comments if you have some question about that. Uh, for the flat stone, here I um, I use a contrast luminosity on uh, that noise that I'm up here. So it's basically my flat stone that I'm just dialing. Here I come I contrast it and I blend that with just a uniform color. So here again. Enhancing slightly the the volumes with subtle variation using an histogram scan on my ambient occlusion. 
Same here, highlighting the edges. Here I do the same with the valleys, again, just to darken some areas. Just breaking up the tiling. Here I'm just like isolating a few stones and elements just to shift slightly the 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 sort of like uh, stone values to 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 break the repetition. So you can see that some stones have different colors, but it it it's subtle. We we really see since uh, the beginning of this graph that you are really heavily relying on this of this kind of mask to really. Ha isolate each part of uh, each yeah. element that, that that's an awesome technique actually yeah it's it's important basically i think in designer one of the key is being able to create mask and being able to extract your information from your height map as long as you're good with this uh the rest goes pretty well uh usually so um, I think it's it's really a, a very important point, a very impor uh, important aspect is to uh, really keep control on the mask and on the information that you have for, in your height map. Okay, we we have a question for from Edison Eisen uh, with regards to the SBSAR file size. Is it efficient to use alpha images versus? Uh, uh, as source of a uh, height and normal, I guess, versus the SBS. Uh, I guess it's uh, the debate between uh, size or, or processing time. So. Yeah, uh, basically in this graph, it was uh, way easier for me and also uh, way more efficient uh, in terms of milliseconds to uh, have bitmap there because you can also, you know, uh, optimize this bitmap. Uh, if you look at this, if you double click on that one, you can change the bitmap format in JPEG and change the compression there. So it doesn't cost anything almost to uh, get a bitmap like that. Instead of having like a, a big, you know, look at all these components. If I add like subgraph for each and every one of them, it would be like way easier. To process, so uh, that was the that was the idea behind this this optimization. Yeah, definitely. It's it's really I guess it's really a question of uh, each each project is different. Of course, if you have two of them, it may not make sense. But yeah, the best is to test depending of your of your case usage. Yeah, exactly. So. Let's keep going. So um, <clears throat> we are here. So the last step for the for the albedo was to add some suits on top of the facade. So on my rendering, I'm just going to show you back uh, maybe the facade itself. Um, just give me a second. Just going to bring that back. There you go. So um, here, if you look at the the image there, um, you can see that you don't have uh, that much variation. Um, if I had to do another layer of detail, I would have uh, add some decals, like for leaks and stuff like this, to just like ground everything and uh, make it make it more believable, basically. But I couldn't really do that because if you had like leaks everywhere, it, it would have been like on the texture itself and you will notice like the same kind of repetition all over the place. So that's why I kept it like pretty clean. But in the material itself, if you want to change like the, the amount of suit or the amount of dirt, you can do it. So I'm just going to show you how it works. So there you go. You can see that it's like, you know, applied all over. And it can be cool sometimes to have a, a variation, especially if you have like a dirty version like that and you blend that in Unreal with a clean version and you can paint like a, to go from a texture to another and have some dirt in some places, etc. Same goes with the dirt. Uh, you can increase the value there and, you know, it's, it's pretty 
it's pretty it's pretty cool you know so here I'm just like creating a mask there and uh, just super simple for the albedo it's super super subtle and the mask is just like a grayscale you know so it's it's it it goes on top of the the existing albedo there and here it's just another layer for the dirt come from the top um, at the very end, I ooh, okay. At the very end, I just add like a very very small value of uh, curvature because I think it adds uh, you know some sort of sharpen on top of of the albedo, and uh, that's pretty much it for the albedo of this texture. Uh, for the roughness. Um, just gonna show you and jump that back there. J just a question: uh, Do you have a specific? Uh, do you start with height map? I get, um, of course, you, you start with height map, but after that, do you do you focus first on albedo or roughness, or do you have a specific order? Uh, usually, I start with the albedo, and I uh, tackle the the roughness uh, at the end, but sometime. When I need to check certain details, uh, it's possible that I uh, adjust some values in the roughness first, just to make it more readable and uh, come back to it afterward to, to fine tuning it. Uh, it really depends. So okay. uh, yeah, but usually I use as a base uh, some values from my albedo to create my roughness. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, and but. Well, this is a good transition because uh, I just wanted to talk about the roughness there. <laughs> so <laughs> I used so I used the albedo uh, from the shutters there. So these variations, and I'm uh, converting them into uh, grayscale values. I'm adjusting them with the level. Here I'm just like plug plugging the the edge dirt. So this edge dirt is um, exposed and when you're gonna change the values there uh, as they are used here for the rust but also here in the roughness the, 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 the settings are just gonna follow for the roughness and the albedo so it's important to keep that in mind when you're creating presets because everything's connected and you really need to be careful uh, to uh, keep the roughness that you want for the elements that you want. So here I've shifted my uh, roughness to something whiter uh, and keep it synchronized with the, the rust there. Don't know if it's clear, but... It is, it is. Okay, cool. Uh, here for the windows, um, I just like put that very close from black because it's totally reflective. So we want to keep that like super shiny, but you also want to have like subtle bumps and little dirt uh, in the surface. Yeah, it's actually cool to see uh, a sunlight in Paris. So that's yeah, <laughs> yeah, it that's happens really rare. Sometime. <laughs> yeah. That's how we know it's uh, computer graphic generated. Exactly. Otherwise, it's like just raining. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, there you go. And here, uh, once again, a switch. So if I have uh, my shutters, this is going to display that roughness. Otherwise, I'm going to have this. So, so I'm going to have like the reflection on my uh, windows. Here's the the work on the on the flat stone, so on the the facade itself. So here I use like my flat stone. 
I'm adjusting the values and I'm blending together the two. So basically the values are gonna be uh, more rough and the, the peaks are gonna be slightly shinier. So just to enhance the fact that in, in the cracks it's a bit more dirty than on the center. So you can easily see that from here. Uh, for the suits, it's just uh, exactly the same thing. I have my uh, my generator. Uh, well, it's not really a generator, but it's more like a mask. And uh, the values are, uh, are like there as well. So if you change this, it's going to change the the levels there, all the intensity, and you're gonna have like more or less uh, roughness there. For for the grills maps, you use you are relying on the default one for uh, from Substance Designer generally. Yeah, the most of the time I don't uh, I don't use any external grunge map. I think the the one that uh, are already available allows you to create like you know variation. So yeah. There is no need for me. Well, I didn't feel any needs to, to create like new ones. Okay, cool. And uh, so there you go. Here is the roughness. And there you go. For the metallic, it's full black, of course, because there easy. is nothing. Yeah, easy one. Yeah. Uh, the roughness there. Uh, here at the final height. So, and for the normal, um, so I'm using uh, height to normal, uh, and um, I'm just adding uh, a subtle detail. So I'm just using uh, my albedo that I'm converting into normal, and I use that as a normal combine, but it's very it's very subtle you know i don't push this part this blend too much it's just to have like micro information from my albedo into my noise just to make it just you know make the both match uh but it's it's subtle you need to keep that subtle and awesome. here's a look at the the normal and for the occlusion just an hbao and looks like this Perfect. and there you go awesome so i think we made the turn of the um, of the material we we see, did we see everything you wanted to show uh, jonathan uh well not especially i think um i i hope like uh people enjoyed like uh this breakdown uh i really had fun uh creating that texture and um, that was really, you know, that was a really good project, really had fun creating that collection, uh, going from a, um, an architecture style to another. Uh, and yeah, I hope people uh, enjoy the, the release. And um, yeah, go check, uh, go check out the, the, latest, uh, the latest galleries there. So uh, you have the, this Victorian office, um, you have like a uh, like a wood ceiling that I've created. I really like add a lot of fun uh, on on the signature series once again. Uh, it was really a pleasure just to you know just playing around with designer and go crazy with it without having any constraint of time. Uh, yeah. That was cool. Yeah, I can tell you that the people were like uh, super uh, happy uh, uh, within the chat. We still have a few questions for you. Yeah, uh, sure. One from Jasper. Um, so at what part of the creation process are you thinking about cre creating the micro details, the micro normal details, sorry? Um, it's at the very end. It's okay. really at the very end. It's just like a... a a, a small layer of green that I want to integrate at the very end, but it's just like based on my albedo, and it's you you 
e if you already have this micro noise like in your height, it's not especially necessary to uh, add it uh, in your in your normal afterward. But if you want to integrate some details that you have in your albedo, like some sort of grains that you have added, you can try to you know blend that solely uh, with your your normal. Okay, perfect. Uh, another one from Edison. I think we you already answered this one, but it was uh, it was what software you uh, do you um, in which software do you create do you use to create the alphas? So I think it's Substance Designer. You said no. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if I uh, show you back uh, this, so all these elements have been created in Designer. So just like shapes that I'm combining together, uh, exactly like I showed you. Uh, on this breakdown is just like slightly more complex, but everything here has been created in designer. So um, yeah, and um, yeah. if if you um, if you check out my art station um, or even if you go to um, the the substance website, you have uh, many tutorials, and I've uh, wrote one uh, about the creation of my baroque ceiling. So it's in Substance Academy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you go back there, uh, I've explained a few things about um, acid creation. So this kind of thing. And uh, also, uh, I've, um, so I explain how to create this component there. And also, if you check out my uh, GDC talk, I got a, a bunch of uh tips and techniques uh about this material how i created that uh so yeah just check them out or if you have any like specific question just uh please send me an email and uh, i would be happy to help you out with it cool there, there was actually a specific question from alex who was watching really carefully because he was curious about why do you use um just after dilatation or erosion a, a blend with a histogram scan okay let me check i think it's right on there i think the brain is developing a specific uh, uh, substance designer after a while yeah, I think I like him in the matrix basically and just like, yeah. you know, <laughs> you see numbers. Um, there you go. Uh, is it here? I guess I it's I guess uh, we may have the answer in 30 seconds, but I guess it's here because we can see there is a histogram scan below, I think just below. Oh, yeah. there. Okay. I, I oh, guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here I'm just like, you know, erasing the top part of uh, this shape because I wanted to remove it from the top there. Yeah, and that's I guess it. it's this one, but the, the graph is so big and you may use them in from different purposes. Anywhere, but, uh, as you said, you are already available, so directly on the art station to answer the question or... Yeah, um, and, and you. you can also find the, you know, this texture is, is free, so you can like take a look at it and try to go through the wool graph and uh, check by himself. He, but he, if he has any question, please just uh, you know send me an email or contact me in our station. Uh, I would be happy to help. OK, awesome. So I think you can stop two seconds uh, sharing so we, we'll see your awesome face. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we are going to say bye to, to the community together. Yeah, uh, just let me stop sharing this. There we go. Bing, you are here. So thanks again for watching. It was uh, almost one hour and a half exactly. Uh, so it was, uh, thanks again, Jonathan. It was awesome. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, uh, we learned a lot of stuff. And uh, the way you do your materials is, is quite insanely good. So. That's awesome. Once again, don't hesitate to go on our, our Jonathan Art Station page or the Gumroad one as well to, if you want to get more, uh, more tutorials. Uh, Substance, uh, Substance Academy, as you said, uh, you yep. are a bit of a way Art Station. Um, and uh, don't hesitate to download this material on Substance Source. I think we have put the link in uh, the description. If not, we will. So thanks again and uh, see you in the next um, live stream. Thank you, guys. See you.